Hey guys, um, it's Scully. Uh, so, welcome back to, um, another video. Um, I wasn't really sure how soon I wanted to dive into the, uh, the whole bipolar thing I was talking about in one of my videos. Um, I'm usually pretty open about it for the most part. Um, I just, for lack of a better term, I, I just didn't want to bring in the whole kitchen sink in the first video, you know? So, I haven't been feeling the greatest today, emotionally speaking. Uh, especially, I think, with the seasons changing and just stress during this pandemic. Uh, I think it may have thrown me into a depressive episode and, well, I'm feeling it pretty heavy today. So, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit, um, about bipolar disorder. Um, if you've never heard of it, um, it's often, it used to be called, formerly it used to be called, um, manic depression. Uh, they since discarded that term, uh, seeing as how there's, like, I think there's three types of bipolar disorder that, that, that term has since been discarded and is no longer used. Um... Well, they have a uh, bipolar 1 disorder, um, which is characterized by mania and depression. The mania typically lasts about a week, and uh, depending on the person, it can be bad enough to cause things like hallucinations, delusions, um, paranoia, and kind of like some psychotic symptoms. Um, well, that's with bipolar 1 disorder. Um, not everybody who has bipolar 1 has the psychotic features, but some people do. So that one, as you can imagine, is pretty severe, um, at least it can be. It can cause a pretty big disruption in life and functioning. It can affect the ability to hold down, a, hold down jobs and maintain relationships and everything. There's unfortunately still a lot of stigma around it, um, which is why I wanted to take some time to uh, talk to people about it. Um, there's another type of it. There's type 2 bipolar disorder, which is a little bit like type 1, but it's a little different. They, um, have what's called hypomania instead of regular mania. That typically lasts about four days, and although it can be slightly disruptive, it's usually not severe enough to cause, um, like psychosis or delusions, hallucinations, or paranoia, or anything like that. Um, really, for both with the mania, they don't. They typically don't sleep as much when they are in mania or hypomania. Um, for type one sufferers, technically the mania can be shorter than a week if it's severe enough to cause hospitalization. Um, again, that's kind of a case by case basis, but um, so everybody's kind of different. Both type 1 and type 2 have depression. The depression in it is pretty similar to what you would see in somebody with unipolar depression or major depressive disorder is the other term for it. That one typically lasts about maybe two weeks. Um, and that can affect energy and uh, social life and a bunch of things like that. Um, basically, you can kind of see what episodes somebody's having based on the symptoms. A lot of manic and hypomanic symptoms, they usually have pressured speech. They have a flight of ideas, like they're kind of just bouncing from one topic to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, they, can, they can have what's called psychomotor agitation, in which they um, have a hard time sitting still for a long period of time. And they're just very antsy, very wired. Um, they might be very goal-oriented, um, starting a lot of tasks at uh, really pretty close together, and they may not necessarily complete all of them, but with all the energy they have, that it's just like really having the drive to get something done. Um, with some of the things they do, especially if they're feeling very grandiose, or, and maybe even having some delusions and stuff, that they can kind of start things like that, where if they think that they're chosen and they really think that they should go run for president even though they have no experience and they kind of start trying to do things with that but then once that um, episode is over 
they kind of lose that drive, don't really want to do that so much anymore. Um, I know that with mania, they, especially, they can be more prone to uh, risky behavior and or risk taking, like spending a lot of money, especially with gambling. Um, they might they might experience hypersexuality and, you know, kind of meet up with people a lot, specifically for, you know, intercourse. Uh, they may, um, yeah, they may do quite a lot of things they wouldn't normally do that are kind of outside of their typical behavior because for the mania and hypomania, it's, it's supposed to be uh, a deviation from their typical behavior, something they don't normally do when they're not. And I feel like with depression, it can be a little bit like that too. Um, like they might, instead of like, you know, if somebody was not sleeping as much when they are manic or hypomanic with uh, depression, they could either sleep more or um, they could have in some insomnia and not sleep as much, especially if they have anxiety and stuff with it. Um, they lose interest in a lot of things they normally enjoy. Uh, they just don't have as much of a drive to do things done, to get things done that they normally do. And it can, some of their friends and family may think that they're being lazy, but really it can be um, them withdrawing because they're depressed and they just um, don't have that drive to do most normal things that they typically do. Especially because with being depressed you have a lot less energy than you normally do. What I feel like a lot of people don't understand about even with just somebody who just has depression is that um, not only does it affect you, like, ambitiously speaking, like, not only do you not have as much of a desire to do those kind of things, but you really don't have a lot of energy either. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that, but um, I know within maybe the last couple of years, one of the things I never really thought about was um, that when you have depression, that you kind of have almost, like, this whole body heaviness that kind of happens. Um, I kind of forget what the term was, but I remember looking that up briefly one time and thinking that that was really interesting because I feel like that that's a part of it that people don't really talk about so much, which is actually pretty shocking considering, you know, depression's not super uncommon. It's actually pretty common these days. And for some reason, you just don't really hear about that so much. And I kind of felt like, you know, people brought that up more. Wouldn't that kind of break the stigma, kind of get people talking about it? But I don't know. I just remember thinking that was really interesting because, like I said, people just don't, you just don't hear about it as often as you would expect for something like that. So yeah, back to um, uh, mood swings, the um, mania and depression and all that. Another One of the things with it that I feel like the people don't talk about is that with bipolar 1 and 2, you can have um, what are called mixed states, where you have depression and mania together, or hypomania in the case of type 2 bipolar disorder. And that's always really hard to explain to people because... Um, it doesn't feel good, like, at all. It feels terrible. Um, but basically you have manic and hypoman- I'm sorry, you have mania, mania or hypomania, depending on which one you have. You have that and depression together. So you could have energy, but also have anxiety, and your mind could be racing from one idea to the next. But you could also feel the emptiness and the kind of loathing that kind of comes with depression, too. So it's really, really a terrible feeling if you um, have ever experienced it. And it can happen in type 1 and type 2, um, from what I understand. And I mentioned earlier that there was four types. Obviously, bipolar 1 and bipolar 2 being the most common. Well, there's also what's called cyclothymic disorder. Um, truth be told, I don't know as much about this one, but... They have basically hypomania and mild depression. I have was told supposedly a lot of people with it don't usually get diagnosed because it's more mild, but again, that's just what I've been told. I, I don't know from a personal standpoint. But I think their their episodes are supposed to be more spaced out as well, so it's it's kind of a kind of its own thing to some degree. 
And the fourth one is really a temporary diagnosis, but it's uh, bipolar, not otherwise specified. Um, often called uh, BNOS for short, B-N-O-S. Um, so you probably don't hear about that one quite as often either because it's really you meet you meet the criteria for the disorder itself, but there it's unclear as to which one you are like, between type 1 and type 2, and I guess cyclothymic to some degree. So that's kind of meant to be of a temporary diagnosis until um, until you get that diagnosis. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody who's mentioned that one, so I think most of the people I've heard of probably got diagnosed with either one or two. Um, as I understand it, type 2 is more common than type 1. Um, but yeah, they are both... There's also... Um, people tend to think because since bipolar 1 has mania and bipolar 2 has uh, hypomania. I mean, technically, actually, bipolar 1 can have hypomania too, and it often does. Um, but bipolar 2 really is only the hypomania and the depression. And your diagnosis can actually change from type 2 to type 1 if you do eventually experience a full-blown manic episode later on in life. But um, between type 1 and type 2, people tend to think that type 2 is um, not as severe since it has hypomania instead of the regular mania. Well, that's not true, honestly. I mean, everybody presents these kind of things differently, but usually with type 2, they have depression a lot more than someone with type 1. And uh, the depression... Uh, the depression is very awful. So when I had people type 2 explaining to me that they had depression more often, and since I have type 1, I was like, wow, you guys, how often do you deal with that? And they, from what they said, it's pretty frequently. And that, when I when they told me that, I'm just kind of, that wasn't just mind-blowing for me, because, I mean, I'm used to what I'm used to in terms of what I, what I experience, but... I don't know, when I pictured having depression as often as I had maybe my higher states or just... Because I, I don't get full-blown depression very often. So, like, in this case, like, I think I've had it more this year because of the pandemic. But before that, I, I had it maybe once every six months and so not very often. Especially with being on medication and following up with, like, therapy and stuff like that. So when I had somebody telling me that they had the depression part that frequently, I was just like, wow. I mean, <laughs> just when you look at your own life and think that things are tough, and then you look at somebody else and you're, you're just immediately are just like, wow. Sometimes there are just some people out there that really have it worse. And although you feel really bad for them, it does make you kind of appreciate what you have to some degree. So I remember once I heard about that, I... Immediately, it was kind of like, you know, count your blessings, because things can always be worse, even if they don't seem like they can be, they they can. Obviously, I've come a long way with a lot of the stuff I've um, gone through. I had uh, seen a bunch of different doctors um, from about teenage years up until now, and tried so many different medications and everything. Um, and things are a lot better now than they used to be. I mean, there's still days like this where things can feel kind of rough, but... It definitely makes me look back on the past and think, you know, at one point things really were a lot worse. I think most people get to a point in their lives where they unfortunately hit rock bottom. And I've always told people, well, rock bottom isn't always a bad thing as long as you don't stay there. If you hit rock bottom and then things get better for you and you get out of rock bottom, well, rock bottom was a learning experience and it happened for a reason. You don't want to go back there, of course, but if hitting rock bottom gets you to a better point in your life and years later when you're better and things are looking up for a change, sometimes you tend to look back on it a little bit differently nowadays than you may have at the time. Because sometimes you just have to take things one day at a time, no matter how good or bad. And I think life is just kind of meant to be that way, where you're not supposed to just take it all at once. I think you're just kind of supposed to work your way up to it. 
So I, uh, I just wanted to kind of share some information about that. I really hope to eliminate a lot of the stigma that goes with this kind of stuff. Which isn't easy to do, but there's a lot of people you care about with things like bipolar disorder, depression, things like that. That they need to be heard to. And they're people just like us. Sadly, they're very misunderstood because of all the stigma in the world. I mean, even taking medications for things like that alone has a huge, huge stigma. And I really don't think it should because if you go to the doctor when you're sick or when you're injured... I just feel like your brain's no different. When your brain's sick, you have to go to the doctor, too. People think you only go to therapy if there's something mentally wrong with you. Well, there are doctors for things like that if there's something that's not quite right. But truth be told, I feel like it should just be normalized to just go to a doctor like that just simply because you need it. Even if it's only one time. And if you have to go regularly, that's fine, too. Because some people are in therapy for years, which is a very, just very wonderful tool. But then their first thought is like, well, you've been in therapy for like 10 years. Is it not working? Well, no. That's, I mean, it is working. That's why I'm still going. If it wasn't working, I wouldn't be going, you know? It's like taking a pill where if you're still taking it, I mean, that's what it's for. You're supposed to, you're supposed to take it to help with whatever you need it for. I mean, if you ever get to a point where you don't need whatever medication that is anymore, that's that's really good. But it doesn't work that way for everybody. So they're just being compliant and doing what they have to do in order to stay healthy. And it's harder for some people than others. So if you know anybody that has something like this, like bipolar or depression or anything, if you... One of the greatest things you can do is just kind of try to hear them out and just try to be very sympathetic about it. And it's okay to ask questions, and to look things up online, to learn more about it. Because education is a very, very powerful thing to have. And there's so many wonderful resources out there that can help with that. And I'm sure that those people would really appreciate um, if you made that effort to try to learn more about it. Which is not always easy, but... It's just kind of one of those things that some people have and just needs to be more education on things like this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with somebody not knowing and having questions because it's normal in life to ask questions about things you don't know about. I mean, it, I mean, if you can look back on something and know that you don't know a lot about it and you actually take the time to learn more about it and get familiar with it, then, you know, that's a lot more than what some people are prepared to do about things like that. So if you are taking the time to do things like watch this video and kind of do your own kind of homework about it, I really greatly appreciate people that are taking the time to do that. Because not everybody does. So if you're one of those people, thank you very much for your patience and your time and thank you for watching this video and even other people dealing with this too, just know that you're not alone. It just makes me very happy for the people that are learning about this kind of stuff because maybe someday people can take a subject like this and look at it a little differently than we do now and hopefully we can make the world a better place for the people who are dealing with this kind of stuff and even the people that don't have it, just giving people resources. So that's what everybody needs, especially in times like this. So until next time, just take care of yourself and take some time for yourself and just keep going and take everything one day at a time because we'll get through this, but we don't have to do it all in one day. We can be patient and we can go at our own pace because we're all different, but we're all still very wonderful in our own way. Take care.